Times Square uh, was a very wild, seemed like a wild west. Uh, drug pushers, prostitutes, just as a vile scene. Times Square back then was frightening. 41st Street was a horrible, horrible street filled with all pornography. It was extreme poverty. Young people had no sense of hope. Most were unemployed. Uh, most were addicted to one thing or another. There was a big crack problem. The streets were full of garbage, completely littered. It was, it was terrible. Crime was high. It was no man's land. For someone to come here in the middle of this city and to open a church it was unheard of. New York has been my home for many, many years. I've been in ministry 58 years and uh, first came to New York when I was 27 years old to work with gangs and drug addicts. And uh, we started a ministry called Teen Challenge. It was absolutely fascinating to watch the evolution of God's call on his life. For years, he was an evangelist and traveled the world. Times Square was put in my heart and I couldn't shake it. I remember after having a street rally in Brooklyn, uh, couldn't sleep and I got up around midnight. I was right on the corner of uh, Broadway and 42nd Street and I, I began to weep. And I cried, God, you have to raise up a testimony. That, that you have to raise up a church here in the middle of this as a witness. The Holy Spirit said clearly, you know the city. You've loved this city now, I want you to do it. And uh, <clears throat> that was the birth of Times Square Church. He came to New York and got back in the pastorate. He was able to embody such a love of Christ for the individual. One's a shepherd and one's an evangelist. Yeah, he truly has a shepherd's heart. There's a hunger for God on the streets. I know Jesus cares about our cities. He sent us back into this city to reach the lost and hopeless. Broadway, uh, Times Square, their theaters and all, but how do you start? I had no plan. The Lord spoke to me in a still small voice and said, if you will trust me for Broadway, I'll give you a theater, I'll take your breath away. The church was originally at Town Hall, then they moved to the Needlelander on 41st Street, which was horrible. At that time, it was called Crack Alley, because they were sitting everywhere high, and it was rather dilapidated theater. The Mark Hellinger Theater came on the market. When I first walked into the Mark Hellinger Theater, I was breathless. But the theater owner told me, I'm opening a new show, Legs Diamond. And he said, we expect a 10 year run. So I was employed as a stagehand for Legs Diamond. When we had to turn over the theater to pass the day, that's when I first met him, uh, he asked us to put in a stage lighting system. The congregation was very excited when Legs Diamond actually closed. Many of us came into that church on a Saturday and we did everything from using Ajax and toothbrushes to clean the rungs on the stairs to cleaning out the stench. The walls looked like Pepto-Bismol. Right. And it was filthy. The floors, oh, the everywhere seats, you went, everything. The seats had holes in them, they were all ripped yeah. off. We cleaned that church from top to bottom so we could have church the next day. Once we were able to move into the Mark Hellinger, that was home. We just felt such a blessing from God to build a place that really honored Him. Times Square Church was very diverse and very energetic. 
the place was packed out. Word got around that God was doing something in that old theater. It was a very exciting time. power of the presence of Jesus. It's an absolute necessity that God's people have and maintain the presence of the Lord at all times in their lives. The heart of the church is grace. The heart of the church is mercy. And the heart of the church is love. This church is known as having such a heart for the community, having such a heart for people to serve and in the name of Christ, but regardless of the response to Christ, just serve in Jesus' name. The people here, their walk was good. They were good people. I could see how they welcomed everybody into the church. It, it started to change my attitude towards them. And that's how I became a Christian here at Times Square Church, through their attitude. Something happened from the very first service. We gave an invitation for those who needed Christ, and they started just coming, weeping and crying out to God. Right now, there are many on these streets who don't know it, but they're destined to be reached by the Holy Spirit and be in the ministry. It's been estimated there are 50 to 60,000 homeless in the city. They live uh, in hovels like this, and uh, it's especially devastating when it's zero, 10 below zero, and uh, windy. I used to live on the street. I slept in the trains, or in the summertime, I would sleep in the park, and found myself wandering around in the streets of the city, despondent, hopeless, without any direction. I just, in a sense, gave up. I would pass by the church periodically, and I would come into the church to get warm in the winter time, and hear the messages and uh, I would begin little by little to be um, intrigued by the word and more intrigued by the character of the people. Everything was so alien to me that my first instinct was to walk away. But God spoke to me and God said, no, this is where you belong. This is your home. This is what you were made for and you will have an impact here. And Pastor David saw something in me, and he asked me whether or not I felt a call to the ministry. The Lord is looking for people who will worship him the way he ought to be worshipped. Now you imagine me in a situation, I'm, I'm homeless, I'm helpless, I'm hopeless, and God is saying, I've been looking for you. And every now and again, I'll sit in the pastor's room there, and I'll say, you know, I don't know how thick this wall is. I imagine maybe 12, 16 inches, but I say it's that um, far, if you will, between where I am and where I was. And so it's something supernatural. It's something phenomenal. I am humbled by seeing what God has done all these years. God brought in every pastor. I've been attending the church since the first week. The doors opened. I've been a permanent fixture here since then. I had no inclination whatsoever <laughs> that I would ever become a pastor, period. <laughs> I'm more introverted, and so uh, I'm totally out of my comfort zone doing what God has called me to do, but that's okay. He gets the glory as a result. The church, in great measure, becomes an extension or a mirror of our own personal walk with God as pastors. God in His mercy will touch us and in our littleness, give us life for the sake of the weeping around us. I was a police officer for 12 years. I didn't really like people very much. So on May 12, 1978, I pulled over on the side of the road in Canada on my way to work. And I said, Jesus, if, if this is true, then I open my heart to you and I invite you in to be my Lord and Savior. As God lives, the next morning I got up I sat on the edge of my bed and I knew I was a different man. In the early 90s, we were learning how to pastor. We were relatively new to ministry. 
God was blessing the church. We were in a very small town in Ontario. I'd always had a secret longing to come to Times Square Church. I remember I would listen to tapes by Pastor Dave with my hands in the sink looking out the window and went, if I could have a holiday, I'd like to go to Times Square Church. And little did I know, you know, what was my future. Meeting Pastor Carter was another miracle. I was in my car in Pennsylvania driving back to New York City. In my back seat there were some uh, tapes and I put that in the machine and 10 minutes into it something was leaping in my spirit and I pulled my car off the side of the road <clears throat> and there was a telephone number. In 1994, in May, um, Pastor Dave called the house and then he said, I'm wondering if your husband could come and help me. As foreign as it would be to me, I was willing to do it. As I began to pray, that's when the Lord put the desire in my heart to come to New York City. When he came to Times Square Church and preached, the congregation knew that this man was sent from God. And Paul, in essence, is saying the very words, I believe, of many who come to Christ. I can say honestly that Times Square Church was home day one. I feel that I've been tremendously deepened by trusting God in New York City. The transition from going to traditional pastor's wife to a pastoral role really started with my husband. Just one day he turned to me and he said, you know, we may be needing a new pastor. And he looked at me and he goes, it will be a surprise who that is. And he said, I believe it's you. We thank you, Lord, that whenever we feel, Lord, like we shouldn't come, that you will quicken us with this word by the power of your spirit. We can come to the rock any time because we belong to Jesus. I believe that God is enabling us to bring this congregation into a great measure of the supernatural strength that comes to those who are reaching out in the name of God. Wherever there's unity, God obligates himself to bring fruit from the fasting and the praying of the pastors and the congregation, God in his mercy and his grace has laid his hand on Broadway. My hope for the future of Times Square Church is that the testimony of Christ that's been established here will grow, the love of God will increase, and the passion and compassion for the souls of men will always be at the forefront of everything that we do as a church. I am proud of Times Square Church in Christ. I'm, I'm honored that he gave me an opportunity to be a part of it.